shortest verse in the Bible. Jesus wept. Jesus wept. That's John 11, 35. So that's a very easy Bible verse to learn. John 5, Jesus wept. And that is the reason 
that he went to the cross and was crucified. So that's some of the reasons that Jesus went. And you know what? I, I don't know, but I think maybe he is shedding a few tears every day for the things that we do that he thinks are wrong and that are going to hurt us. So we need to pray. Read our Bible like you're doing. Listen in Sunday school like you're doing. And tell that story to other people. Let us pray. Dear Lord, thank you for these children. We are so proud of them. And we are proud of the people that are teaching them and guiding them in the scripture and the ways that they can learn and live their lives. Be with them this week. Watch over them and help them to return next Sunday.
beautiful, beautiful music. What a wonderful children's sermon. I guess what mine's about. I could just say, let's go home, because mine's already been preached. Between Riley and Ann, they went over just about everything I'm going to go over. But I'm going to talk about how to live free. Got a lot of reading this morning, so I'll only stand if you can stand up for 45 verses. They're short verses, but there are 45 of them. So please, if only you can stand up for 45, please stand. John chapter 11, verses 1 through 45. Give our folks at home just a, a minute to, to find John 11, 1 through 45. And we all know the story, we just heard it. But maybe we'll look at it from a different angle. And we'll be reading from the King James Version. Now a certain man was sick, named Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister Martha. It was that Martha which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore his sister sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. When Jesus heard that, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Now Jesus said, or Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. When he had heard, therefore, that he was sick, he abode two days still in the same place where he was. Then after that said to his disciples, Let us go into Judea again. His disciples said unto him, Master, the Jews of late sought to stone thee there. And goest thou thither again? There's these and thou's and thithers and run into each other. Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in the day? If any man walk in the day, he stumbleth not, because he seeth the light of this world. But if a man walk in the night, he stumbleth, because there is no light in him. These things said he, and after that he said unto them, Our friend Lazarus sleepeth, but I go, that I may awake him out of sleep. Then said his disciples, Lord, if he sleep, he shall do well. Howbeit Jesus spoke of his, of his death, but they thought that he had spoken of taking of rest in sleep. Then Jesus said unto them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And I am glad for your sakes that I was not there. To the intent you may believe. Nevertheless, let us go unto him. Then said Thomas, which is called Didymus, unto his fellow disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. Then when Jesus came, he found that he had lain in the grave four days already. Now Bethany was nigh unto Jerusalem, about fifteen furlongs off. And many of the Jews came to Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. But Mary sat still in the house. Then said Martha to Jesus, If thou hast been here, my brother had not died. But I know that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it thee. Jesus said unto her, Thy brother shall rise again. Martha said unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? She said unto him, Yea, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which should come into the world. And when she had so said, she went her way and called Mary, her sister, secretly saying, The master is come and calleth for thee. As soon as she heard that, she arose quickly and came unto him. Now Jesus was not yet coming to the town, but was in the place where Martha met him. The Jews then which were with her in the house and comforted her, when they saw Mary, that she rose up hastily and went out, followed her saying, she goeth unto the grave to weep there. Then when Mary was come where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet, 
saying unto him, Lord, if thou hast been here, my brother had not died. When Jesus therefore saw her weeping, and the Jews also weeping, which came with her, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled and said, Where have ye laid him? They said unto him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. Then said the Jews, Behold how he loved him. And some of them said, Could not this man have opened the eyes of the blind and have caused that even this man should not have died? Jesus therefore again groaning in himself cometh to the grave. It was a cave and a stone lay upon it. Jesus said, Take ye away the stone. Martha the sister of him that was dead said unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh. For he has been dead four days. Jesus said unto her, Said I not unto thee, That if thou believest, thou should see the glory of God? Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. And I knew that thou hearest me always. But because of the people which stand, stand by, I said, that they may believe that thou hast seen me, or sent me. And when he thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was bound with a napkin. Jesus said unto them, Loose him, and let him go. Then many of the Jews which came to Mary and had seen the things which Jesus did believed on him. The word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. This next story is dedicated to poor Max who could have had such a far worse fate in Artesia, New Mexico, Mary Bratcher accidentally ran over her pet dog, Brownie. I had no clue. The family tearfully buried the little mixed breed dog in a field near their ranch, their ranch home. The family's youngest son refused to accept that Brownie was gone, and neither would Brownie's mama. The mama pooch dug Brownie out of the ground the follow, and the following day the family returned to, from a trip to discover that Brownie was there on the porch covered with mud and cake and blood. Echo, echo. Brownie was barely breathing, but they rushed him to the veterinarian. Guess what? Brownie recovered. Even though he had lost an eye and broke his shoulder, Brownie recovered. And they gave Brownie a new name. Can you guess what it was? Lazarus. No, well, it could have been lucky too, but, but it was Lazarus. Because he came out of the grave. Our text this morning is about another Lazarus. A friend of Jesus. The biblical Lazarus was also dead. Lying and waiting in a tomb. He and his sisters, Martha and Mary, were friends of Christ. And they had seen what Jesus had done, how he had opened blinded eyes and how he had healed and, and done all sorts of other manners of wonders. So they sent for Jesus. Jesus got the message, but decided to wait an extra two days before he began his journey. Now I want to stop here for a moment and share something with you. Oftentimes when we call on Christ, he doesn't come when we want Him to, but I want to remind you that He's never late. I'm going to say that again. Often when we call Christ, He doesn't come when we want Him to, but He's never, ever late. By the time that Jesus decided to go, His disciples probably thought that He had forgotten. And when He says He wants to go, they became more vocal. Master, you can't go there. Don't you know that the religious leaders are after you? They want to kill you. Stay here. You can do good work while you're alive. 
They all said this out of fear, except one person, Thomas. Now, again, what do we call Thomas? Doubting, Doubting Thomas. Thomas. But I want you to listen to Thomas. Thomas exercises faith here. And this is before he doubts the resurrection and says, I have to see. Thomas was ready to follow Jesus to Jerusalem. He said, let us all go and die with him. They knew that the religious leaders were out to kill Jesus. And Thomas says, we'll all go with you, Lord. I'll go and I'll die with you. We forget that when we talk about doubting Thomas. We forget about that faith that he showed when he said, I'll go with you. And most of us, when, when Christ calls us to go with him, most of us shrink from that call. Even after we've recognized the resurrection's reality. But here Thomas is doing it beforehand. Jesus arrived in Bethany four days after they had buried Lazarus. Now remember, this is before modern day embalming. Four days. Martha greeted him first and told him, Lord, if you had been here, Lazarus would not have died. You could have saved him. And Jesus startled her by saying, your brother will live again. But Martha wouldn't be comforted. Well, I know that, that he will live again at the land, the last day, at the resurrection. But Lord, that, that's just so far off. And then Jesus uttered the basis for history's hope and direction. Martha, oh Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. What a claim! Jesus claimed to be in charge of everything, life, death, and everything in between. How many remember Muhammad Ali? From the 1960s. In the 1960s, Muhammad Ali, he was then known as Cassius Clay, boldly proclaimed that he was the best boxer ever to set foot on the planet. The brash young man would watch, look like springs in his feet and, and that left jab stepped, in, stepped into the ring and demolished what many thought was the indestructible Sonny Liston. The world of boxing couldn't believe it. They were waiting for Ali to get his head bashed in. In a later interview, Ali posed the deeply philosophical truth. It ain't bragging if you got the goods. He did talk a lot of smack, didn't he? It ain't bragging if you got the goods. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Jesus wasn't bragging. He had the goods. He was the king of kings, the lord of lords, and all power was given unto him in heaven and in earth. He wasn't bragging. So they took him to where Lazarus was entombed. Jesus spoke an audible prayer to the Father. Just so those who were around him could make no mistake that he had the intention of raising a dead man. And then he called the corpse his name. And the crowd of onlookers, including supporters, detractors, and assorted curiosity seekers, beheld what was not supposed to happen. A dead man walked. Now that's the story. You've, you heard it earlier. But what do we make of it? What does it mean on this Lenten Sunday? What is its application to our lives this week? I want us to note this morning the parallels between Lazarus' condition and our own. First parallel is Lazarus was buried. From the beginning, we are in a grave of sin. And the Bible states it very clearly in Romans 3 and 23. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. In John 8 and 7, he that is without sin among you, let them cast the first stone. In Ephesians 2 and 1, and you have he quickened. 
who were dead in trespasses and sin. It's a grave. Sin is a grave. It's a trap. Because we have become slaves to our sinful natures. John 8 and 34. Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin. Sin is a deep, deep trap. And no one could ever get out. And this is the reason that Christ had to die. Sin is just that serious. Our freedom comes with a heavy price. What is it that we celebrate on July 4th? Our, the independence of our nation. We celebrate the Declaration of Independence. And of those 56 men who signed it, five were captured and tortured by the British as traitors. Nine others died in battle. Twelve had their homes burned. Two lost sons in battle. And two other signers' sons were taken prisoner. Our political freedom came at a heavy price. But the price of our eternal liberty cost the only son of the living God. A heavy price. We were buried in sin. And like Lazarus was buried in the grave. And Jesus came to us just like he went to Lazarus. The second parallel, Lazarus was beckoned. He was called. Jesus stood by the grave and, and he called out to his friend, Lazarus. By the way, the, those are not the only friends that Christ has. He has a whole lot more friends that when they die, they will go to be with him. He calls us his friends. And no greater love does a man have to lay down his life for a friend. And Lazarus was a dear friend. And the tomb was no place for him. <clears throat> now, in a very real sense, Jesus beckons all of us, like I said, as friends now. And this is a verse that you may not have heard or, or not heard used. Luke 7 and 34. The Son of Man is come eating and drinking. And you say, behold, a gluttonous man and a wine-bibber, a friend of publicans and sinners. That's it. Yes, absolutely. He's a friend of sinners like, like you and like me. He beckons us. Come unto me, all you that, that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. Early in his ministry, Reverend D. L. Moody was called upon to preach a funeral. He hunted throughout the New Testament trying to, to find some ideas of, of how Jesus preached a funeral. But his search was in vain. He could not find any examples. And the reason why is that every time Jesus confronted a funeral, he broke it up. Jesus was known to mess up a good funeral. That's what the beckoning voice of Jesus does around death. Lazarus was buried, beckoned, and finally, Lazarus was bound. When Lazarus appeared at the door of the tomb, Lazarus was wrapped from head to toe in cloths. He was in grave clothes for the dead. And Jesus said, loose him. And the word means to loosen as if something was constricting him. Now Lazarus would have had a tough time walking home in that mummy outfit. I would have said Boris Karloff mummy outfit, but not many people would have known who I was talking about. I'm sure some of you older folks know who Boris Karloff is, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. The younger folks are, huh? Ask Grandma when you can get home. 
But he would have had a tough time walking home in those grave clothes. He would have stumbled everywhere, been, been tripping over everything, everything in our lives. The parallel is that since Jesus has set us free from, from death, and sin, we too should take off our grave clothes so we can stop walking and stumbling and bumping into everything. We need to take off those filthy rags of sin, stop being bound by them so that we can walk in the light of Christ. And we need to wear the appropriate clothing for this Christian walk. The Word says to put on the whole armor of God. And Paul also says emphatically, Wherefore, seeing we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. In short, just as our political freedom doesn't mean we can enjoy liberty without responsibility, our spiritual liberation at the cross means we have been saved to a lifestyle of good works and serving and service to Christ Jesus. A pastor once put the question to a class of children, and I, I love to hear children's responses to questions. The question was, if all good people in the world were red and all the bad people were green, what color would you be? One little girl raised her hand. The pastor called on. And she said, Pastor, I'd be streaky. <laughs> You'll get it on the way home. But isn't that true for all of us? We'd be a mixture of the colors because we're not perfect. But we serve one who is. Oswald Chambers wrote, God regenerates us and puts us in contact with all His divine resources. But He cannot make us walk according to His will. These three parallels are striking. As with Lazarus, we have been buried, beckoned, and bound. The question this morning is, will we, like Lazarus, respond to the call of Christ and leave that tomb? And being saved, having left the tomb, will we, like Lazarus, put the grave clothes off? Will we take them off so that we can walk as Christ calls us to walk? The answer is up to each and every one of us. And it depends largely on whether you will open your eyes and your heart to Christ who beckons you to come out from that burial place and take off the binding clothes of death. George Berman Foster said it this way. Jesus blew everything apart. And when I saw where the pieces landed, I knew I was free. Mount Mitchell and those who are watching at home, do you know that you have been died for? Do you know that someone loved you that much that they died for you? Do you know He blew death and hell and the grave apart for you? Are you willing to accept this? Are you willing to accept Christ as your Savior? If so, let today be that day. And let the church say. Amen. Please stand as you are able and join with me in singing hymn number 365. <laughs>
Let us receive the benediction. Whatever wilderness the Spirit has brought you to, walk in boldness as a beloved child of God. Walk in peace under the shelter of the Most High. Walk in faith knowing that Christ walks with you. And let the church say, Amen. Amen.